Hello, so this video will go through how to create a Q&A platform or a quiz with some more complex logic using Bubble. We're going to go through the backend setup of a simple Q&A platform, then of a more complex one going through the workflows and how to create an admin tool so you can actually create questions with predefined answers and displaying certain questions when a certain predefined answer is selected by the user. Okay, so the basic Q&A platform is kind of like uh, Quora, so you can add questions, then here you see all the questions, and then if you click a question like, do you like football, you see its list of answers, best hobby ever, I love it, it's super easy for rich clubs to win, so no, and here you can add your own answer. So how this works on a backend perspective is that you have questions, so new type you create, and answers, each question has a list of answers, so to do this, you select answer here and make it a list, click create. Each question has a text and each answer is associated with a question, like I do not like football, it's associated with a question, do you like football, and a text. And then over here at the top, you have an input, and when you click ask, you create a new question with the text of the input, you reset the inputs. Here you have a repeating group showing all the questions, searching for all questions in the entire backend and displaying the question text and an icon. If this icon is clicked over here, we have a group. And in this group, we display the current sales question. So when we click the first question, we see the first question. When we click the third question, we see the first qu third question. And in this group type questions, we have a repeating group type answer showing parent groups, questions, list of answers. So all answers of that question. And here is an ability to answer the question. And when we click answer, this is where the magic happens. We join questions and answers. So first we create an answer with a question of the group. And then we change that question to amend its list of answers to add the question, answer which we just created to that question's list of answers. This allows us to display in the repeating group the list of answers of that question. So quite a simple backend. Now one step more complex is a kind of a quiz with predefined yes and no questions. The question could be, do you like tennis? And then there could be a yes and no answer. Yes, I, I love tennis. No, I do not like tennis. And when you click yes, you might see tennis related question. When you might click no, you might see a different sport like a football question. So the backend setup for this is that each question has a no is answer and a yes is answer. So underneath question, we have a no is answer, type no is answer, and a yes is answer, type yes is answer. And so then, whenever we click yes, we want to display a new question in this group. So this is just one question we're displaying, just the first question in the database, search for questions, first item. We could also search for just one uh, unique ID, or maybe only order number of the question equals one. And when we click yes, we want to see the follow-up question of that yes answer. And when we click no, we want to see the follow-up question of the no answer. So to do this in the database, each no answer has a next question type question attached to it, similar to which each yes answer also has a next question attached to it. And of course, the root question. So an example is, do you like tennis is the root question. The yes is answer would be, yes, I love tennis. And the next question would be, do you like Roger Federer? And for no is answer the same. The root question would be, do you like tennis? No, I do not like tennis is the no is answer and that text of it. And the next question would be, do you like baseball? Okay, and then when we click this group yes here, we display in the group questions of that question, the yes is answer the next question. So yes, I when we click yes of yes, I like tennis, we show um, do you like Rafael Nadal? And then we do the same for no, we display data in that group questions, the next question of the no answer. And then we also want to change the database, so later we can uh, query all the questions someone has answered. To do that, every user has a list of questions answered. This is just a list of questions. If you go underneath user, it's a list of questions answered. And to that list of questions, uh, we add the one we just answered. And also we want to amend the question in such a way that we uh, kind of uh, 
save to the database the people who've answered no to that particular question. So then we can just later filter that qu all questions and no answerers. So Bob, Charlie, John all said no, and um, Barbara, Margaret, and I'm sorry, Thatcher said yes. And so we've done this now. So when we click yes, we save the question uh, to the current user's question, should we display the next question and we add the current user to the list of yes answers. So this is the first part of the logic. Then as an admin, you need uh, more logic because you have to actually create all the questions and link all the yes and no questions to another. So the first part is we have three inputs, one for the question, yes, uh, do you like tennis? Yes, I love it. No, I do not like it. And when we click create question, we have to create all three things. The no is answer, the yes is answer, and the question. So the no is answer contains the text of the input which we named no, the yes is answer, the input named yes, and the question, the text of the input named question. And here we also join the no is answers, no, I do not like um, tennis, to the question, do you like tennis, and the yes is answer which we created here also, we join it to the question, and the no is answer, we give it the root question, so no, I do not like uh, tennis is actually linked to the root question, do you like tennis? Same with the yes answer. And uh, we select that question. Um, so each um, admin might have a selected question underneath database. This is just type question. This helps us select questions to later edit them. Because after creating the questions, the next part is actually linking them. So to do this, here we've got a repeating group of all questions, searching through all questions. We display the text, the yes answer cancels, yes is answer text, the no is answers text. Then um, we also show of that question, the next question if we uh, if yes would be clicked, the next question if no is clicked, and the ability to select that question. So to just save it to the user selected questions, and then also to select as the next question for yes. So if, for example, um, the question would be, um, I don't know, do you like baseball? This um, we might want to actually have of the question we selected, of the yes, I do like baseball, then I want to kind of, as the admin, choose that the next question, if someone answers yes, I like baseball, would be do you like the Yankees, as for instance. And in a similar way for no, we want to make sure that when someone has selected uh, I do not like baseball. The next question is, for example, do you like football? And in such a way, we've set up the database. So let's uh, check how it works. So do you like football? Um, no, football is boring. Do you like tennis? Yes, great sport. Uh, 40, love it. And do you like Rafael Nadal? No, that guy must be on steroids. Do you like Roger Federer? No, too old. He should stop. So if I click no to all t-shirts stop currently it shows nothing so i'm going to create a new question which links this up new question is do you like uh, uh djokovic djokovic instead question mark uh, yes I, I love serbs um no he uh, plays unfairly and i create this question by clicking the button and now i have to link the question so i've selected you like djokovic but actually I first want to select the Federer question by searching all questions, selecting the Federer question. So now I'm selecting the next question for do you like Federer? And then Djokovic. Um, so when I click for the Roger Federer question, when I say no for Federer, I want the Djokovic question to come up. So I click select as next question for no. And then I click refresh. And here, do you like football? Uh, no football is boring. Do you like tennis? Yes. Do you like Rafael Nadal? Um, no. Do you like Roger Federer? No. And here I come up with a new Djokovic question I've just created. What's also quite nice is here you can see a count of all questions answered and all questions I've answered with no. To do this, it, you can actually have the current user's question answered the count because as you remember, whenever we click yes or no, this was saved to the current user's question answered. 
and then all the no answers, they were also saved in a different way. They were all a part of the no question. So to do this, current uses question and answers. So every question actually has a no as answer, right? Do you like uh, football has a no, I do not. Do you like tennis? No, I do not. So we can't just count that. So we have to instead filter it using an advanced filter and checking all no answers only for those where actually the root question, do you like tennis, the list of no answers of that question contains the user because that way we actually know the user answered no to the question because if we check and then we count it because if we check this workflow here, we mended the question and uh, do you like tennis and the list of no answers have that user in them and so therefore we can do this and yeah, this uh, basically shows the basic setup for creating such a quiz platform. Hope it helps. Um, just want to also make one more thing clear. We've al always got the current user here, also in some of the workflows, make changes to user. But actually, if you look in my database underneath user, so the no is answers and the questions are all uh, occupied. But um, currently, there are no users in this app. But still i was able to fill the app this is as bubble if no one is logged in the current user can still add things but uh, actually um it will just be saved in the cookies uh, of that uh, person so that's how things can be uh, stored between steps but things will still be created so if that person deleted his cookies the answers and questions will still be there but you could still use a condition to for example only show that person questions where um, they've not answered yet. So only when current user's question answers doesn't contain this grouped question, for example, you could add conditions like this to make sure that the user does not answer a question twice. What's also useful to note about Bubble is that here there are actually each, um, I think, question it is, has a list of uh, users who answered no. So actually the same user, even um, if I do not have, a, have an account, it will recognize me through cookies, but basically um, I cannot be part of that question's no answer is twice. I can only either be part of the list or not part of the list. So this stops uh, the same user from actually, um, if you add the right conditions, uh, kind of uh, answering the same question with no twice. Okay, so I um, hope this helped you. For short tips on Bubble and more, check tipbestyle.com. Cheers.